Yeah, great to have your company on DXB today, the show that uh, shines a light and focuses on all things Dubai, be it the events that are taking place in the city or, of course, the big conversations. And that is what's happening right here at the moment because you cannot go to a dinner party. In fact, you can't go anywhere without a, ch uh, without a chat about rent or buy. To rent or to buy is the big question. And a lot of people out there might think, OK, but that's only for certain industries. But you know what? Uh, the conversation has prompted all industries to look at uh, what they offer, none more so than hospitality. Let's get a little bit of insight now from the COO of Rove Hotels. Everyone loves their favourite Rove, that's for sure, around this city, very much a part uh, of the fabric and the infrastructure of the city now. Paul Bridger is alongside us. Paul, good to see you as always. Good to see you. Thank you. Because a lot of people were going, hang on, why is Paul on? Because if there's one industry where you can't buy, it's got to be a hotel room. But at the same time, if a hotel owner or a hotel operator such as yourself sees a booming property market out there and that demand for rent, does that make you all sit down around the board table and go, OK, we need to look at what our offerings are? Yes, yeah, so like a lot of things in COVID, we, we, you know, we had to rethink what we were doing. The pivot. The pivot and um, you know what, what we realized was we, we didn't have a lot of tourists coming at the time and we had a lot of empty rooms so why not package them and do really affordable monthly rates people love our public spaces and our facilities um, and it's just continued from there you know and we have probably sometimes in the year a thousand people staying in our hotels on a minimum monthly basis um, and we've had you know we've had people stay for four years what? In the hotel? So in the hotels, yeah. So uh, people love it. And, and now it's got to a point where actually what we've realized is people love the flexibility, one, but they also love the locations, you know, and they can move around the locations. So that's now led us to rethink again. And, you know, we, we're now launching residential products um, in key city center locations with all the facilities you'd expect to see in a hotel. Um, for precisely that reason. Amazing. Amazing. So who would you say that like Rove Hotels in the rental space appeals to most? Is it young professionals, freelancers, tourists that are wanting to come for a prolonged amount of time but aren't looking to really settle here? Like who's your audience? Yeah, all of the above. Okay. So that we have a lot of people that, that when they come into Dubai, they're not sure how long they're going to stay for. So that gives them the flexibility. Same when they're leaving Dubai, you know, often you have to finish your rent at a certain point of time so you need somewhere for a month or two months yeah um, and then we see a lot of the kind of digital nomads um, that, that are in and out for for a month or two at a time so a real nice mixture and, and, and there's a community now yeah they all kind of know each other even between the hotels they know each other and and is the feedback that you know people kind of enjoy this kind of format within the hotel yeah and what you know what, what they're benefiting from okay they, they have a fairly compact living space but you have great public spaces where you can kind of connect. And, and if you're not too worried about having a big apartment, um, you have that flexibility of kind of hotel living. You know, you have your room cleaned every day. You don't have to worry about utilities. Um, and there's always somebody at the desk 24 hours to help you if you need anything. Yeah, I mean, I mentioned earlier, I know my friend, she stayed for a month in one of your properties and she loved it. It was perfect, great location. And like you said, ideal in terms of amenities and everything. Did she pay or did she just refuse to leave? Uh, no, she, she, I think she did pay in. <laughs> Speaking yeah. of amenities though, I know that Rove Hotels also has other facilities. You've got podcast rooms, for instance. This is a whole different facet of facilities I wouldn't expect in a normal hotel. Yeah, so, you know, in, the, in some of the hotels we have podcast studio. Uh, we have really, you know, great co-working spaces where we encourage people, even if they're not staying in the hotel, to come in and work. Uh, meeting facilities and, and we've, we've kind of carried the, full, the same into our residential products. So now, you know, we have a podcast studio and a residential product. We have great co-working and, and really fully loaded facilities. Could you tell us a little bit more about the monthly stays at Row Hotels? Sure. So, you know, you have a fixed fee um, and it will vary by location. Um, that includes everything. So I mean, your, your utilities, your cleaning, et cetera, et cetera. We ask people to stay for a minimum of 30 days. And then after that, it's kind of pro rata for as long as you want to stay. We were just talking about rents rising massively in Dubai at the moment and people looking for accommodation. How has that reflected in the occupancy in at Rove Hotels? How has that affected the number of people coming to stay with you? Yeah, I mean, probably since Q4 last year, I mean, we, we've struggled to have an empty room. You know, wow. it's, uh, business is great. Um, of course, we're supported by initiatives like our extended stay packages, but Dubai, the city is buzzing um, and our hotels are full. How do you then, and your, your team of GMs and things like that, how do you keep 
things affordable. When, when, when the old supply and demand model is like that and demand is going through the roof, et cetera, and as you said, you've got everything. You've got the location, location, location. You, you provide the convenience, et cetera. Is that a sort of mandate that you sort of set yourself? Yeah, so we, we try to be relative to the market. So, you know, of course our prices have gone up. Um, we actually put a cap on our properties. So, you know, in peak times when we see over demand, we won't charge more than a certain certain value for each, for each hotel because we want to reflect the brand and we want to keep that affordable um, element. Mm. The other word that really struck me as well, and just watching the, the, the video there, was convenience. Is that what the modern hotel guest, be it short term, long term, is demanding at the moment? Yeah, people often talk about luxury. And actually, I think now luxury is evolving. Right? Luxury actually is, I want to do what I went to do, want to do when I want to do it. Yeah. Is luxury um, the five minute commute? <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's time. <laughs> um, it's availability of people. It's, you know, if I want to go to the gym at 3 a.m., I should be able to do that. Mm. Um, and that's what we try to do. But it's weird, isn't it? There is, there, there does seem to be a shift, you know, that whole idea. That times were that, that, that if you've got, which words have you, we've used squillions, we've used septillions, <laughs> we've used quintillions, but if you've got a bit of cash behind you and things like that, and you stay in a very nice hotel, there's basically someone to pick up a bag and there's someone to do this and there's someone to that. People don't want that anymore, do they? They want, as you say, that more of an independent approach. Yes, I think so. I think it's really, I don't think it's a generational thing. I think it's just a mindset thing. And we talk about our, our Rovers as young and young at heart. And I think that's, that's kind of how we, how we see it. The Rovers, I love that. You're one of them now. Oh, mate. I've been, a rover. I've been a rover for a long time. Hey, I tell you. Resident rover. Well, thank you so much, Paul, for joining us. If you want to stay with us for a few more minutes, because I believe now it's time for DXB in 60. Louis, over to you. Ooh. Matthew, you are on the spot now. <laughs> so for 60 seconds, we're going to try and learn as much as we can about you. Are you ready? All set. All right. Your 60 seconds on the clock starts in three, two, one. Here we go. Matthew, if you weren't in journalism, what would you be doing? Oh, I'd probably be on a beach somewhere <laughs> doing nothing. <laughs> I'd like that. The most used app on your phone? Uh, probably my email app. Superhuman for anyone who's used it before. And your first job? Uh, I was a cook. Really? I was a chef for a, a year and a half. All right, well, chef, what was your motto in life and in work? My motto? Yeah. Uh, do unto others as they would do unto you. Oh, very nice. A superpower you wish you had? Uh, more, making more subscribers for Arabian business. <laughs> <laughs> if you could hang out with someone for 24 hours, who would it be? Uh, that's a very difficult question to answer. I've been fortunate to interview a lot of, a lot of very interesting people. Um, I think it probably, it's probably just a, a big honor to be here today, hanging out with oh, you look lot. Look at you. Ah. And your top podcast recommendation? Uh, I really enjoy uh, listening to uh, Planet Money um, by NPR. They tell some really interesting economic stories. Freakonomics is another great one as well about the relationships between two completely different parts of the economy. Eh, time's up, unfortunately, but I do have one more question. Why Dubai? The opportunity, I think. Dubai just presents a huge amount of opportunities for anyone who comes here. There's massive opportunities across all different industries and in my kind of industry the people who come to Dubai really make the job that much more interesting. Nowhere else attracts the kind of calibre of individual like Dubai does. Matthew, you're a good man. Thanks for coming back and being part of the show. Great to have you with us here today. I know it's a busy time of year so I really appreciate your time and uh, thanks for your insight as well. Thank you very much for having me. The guest co-hosting Paul, bless you. Thanks so much indeed for uh, everything that you and your team do down here to make the city that it, the, the place that it is. So thank you for your time. Uh, right, don't go anywhere. That sounded like a closing, didn't it? No, no, we're staying, don't worry. You stay with us as well. Why? We've got, we've got some world-class um, music coming your way. Great performance. The Midnight Buzz Band is up next.